Okay, so this time we're actually going to try to evaluate an integral. We have a rational function, again, just a 1 in the numerator. We've got the denominator conveniently factored for us. This time we have one repeated root, right? So we look for our partial fraction decomposition, and we expect that we should have 1 over x minus 1 times x plus 2 squared equal to some factor a over x minus 1 plus b over x plus 2 plus c over x plus 2 squared. Okay. Now, um, we could get a common denominator, multiply out the numerator on, on the right-hand side, collect terms, equate coefficients, get our system of equations, solve. We'll have three equations and three unknowns. But again, we, we don't want to have to do that unless we absolutely have to. So what we can do is we can try this sort of intermediate approach where we say that, you know, this is going to be if we get a common denominator but we don't actually multiply things out, then we have a times x plus 2 squared plus b times x minus 1 times x plus 2 plus c times x minus 1. So that would be the numerator all over that common denominator of x minus 1 times x plus 2 squared should be equal to the numerator over here. So we should expect that we have this equality. 1 is equal to that. And now we can try different values, right? So if we try x equal to minus 2, well, this side remains as 1. 1 is equal to, so this will be 0, this will be 0. We simply get c times minus 3, and that means that c is minus 1 third. Okay, not so bad. We've got 1 out of 3. So then we can try x equals 1. Okay, so 1 is equal to, so this is going to be a times 3 squared, plus 0, plus 0, okay? So a is 1 over 9. The trouble with this is we, we're missing b, right? So we don't get b. Now, there are some different approaches that you could take to solve for b, but we typically what we do in this situation is we say, look, we've already got 2 out of the 3. We've only got 1 remaining. Yes, we've exhausted all the kind of easy ones to plug in where, where two out of the three terms disappear and we can just solve for the, the one that's left over. Um, or, you know, you just pick some other value and you use the fact that we already know what a and c are equal to. So we pick some other number which, and, and typically you want to choose something that's easy. Um, zero is typically easy to plug in. So if we plug in x equals zero, I get one is equal to well, a, which is now 1 over 9 times 2 squared, which is 4, plus b times, so that's going to be 2b times minus 2. And then we have c is minus a third times, so put in 0, I get minus 1. So I get minus 2b is equal to 1 minus 4 over 9 minus 1 over 3. So 1 third is 3 ninths, so that's 1 minus 7 ninths. So that leaves me with um, 9 ninths minus, so 2, 2 over 9. And that suggests that b should be minus 1 over 2. Sorry, minus 1 over 9, uh, right? 2 ninths divided by 2 leaves me with 1 9. Okay. All right, so having found those coefficients, we can come back up to here.
and we put them in. So A is 1 over 9, so we have this. We have 1 over 9 times x minus 1. B is minus 1 over 9 times x plus 1. And C is minus 1 over 3, sorry, x plus 2 here, times x plus 2 squared. Okay. And now we simply integrate term by term. So this is going to be 1 over 9 times the natural log of x minus 1 minus 1 over 9 times the natural log of x plus 2. And here we've got x plus 2 to the minus 2, adding 1 to the exponent gives me minus 1. We get 1 over 3 um, times 1 over x plus 2, right? x plus 2 to the minus 1 plus our constant. So we can leave it like that. Some people might want to use log properties to combine these into a single term. It's not absolutely necessary, but you can, you can do it if you're so inclined. And that gives you the answer. Okay.